Welcome to Seven Pot Club. I'm Rob. I grow hot peppers. Time for an update on our indoor hot pepper related projects in progress. Overwintering plants, our arrow garden one week after planting, organic fertilizer, the pepper plant still hanging in the garage, and our next hot sauce project. We'll even have a sneak peek at a new song I'm working on for an upcoming video. There's a lot to cover, so let's get started. To be honest, I hadn't been paying close attention to the two plants I'd been overwintering, a bird ahi and a mini ricotto brown. Back on October 11, I pruned them back, sprayed them with neem oil to kill any pests, then brought them down to the basement and positioned them under one of my smaller grow lights. There's been a lot going on around here, and I hadn't really paid much attention to them since. It had been raining for days before I brought them inside, so they were still plenty moist and hadn't needed to be watered. When I first started filming them for this episode, I was quite pleased. I was afraid the ricotto wasn't going to make it, as it had dropped all its remaining leaves after it was brought inside. But now it was developing new growth, and I was very encouraged. The burdot, he also had lots of new growth, and I thought I saw buds developing near the top. But when I took a closer look, buds were not all I saw. I saw something moving. The leaves near the top of the plant were covered with adult and nymph stage aphids. My heart sank. This happens to me every time I overwinter plants, no matter what preventative measures I take. One year it was powdery mildew. The next time it was spider mites. This time, aphids. At first, I thought about trying to stop the infestation. I sprayed both plants with neem oil and started removing infested leaves. But then I thought about it. These plants were on the same table where I will be growing hundreds of seedlings in just a matter of weeks. Do I really want to take the chance? Reluctantly, and with a heavy heart, I carried the plants outdoors. From now on, if a plant goes outside, it stays outside. These plants will have to be destroyed. It's very sad, but we do have other indoor plants to tend. Let's look at our arrow garden, hydroponic garden, one week after planting. It's not realistic to expect all nine grow pods to have sprouted after just a week, but let's see how we're doing. Genovese basil was the first to germinate and came up just a few days post-planting. We'll be making tiny batches of pesto before you know it. Brazilian Mata Frade, my favorite hot pepper, was the first of the peppers to sprout. And now we're seeing some seedling action from the dwarf Chiltepin. Time will tell, but I'm suspecting this compact plant may be the perfect pepper for arrow garden growing. Dill is saying hello to the world, and so is Thai basil. I think there's something happening in the thyme pod, but it's hard to tell. Still waiting on curly parsley and the other two peppers, ahi charapita and cap 214. Stay tuned for updates. We did an episode about fertilizing a while back, in which I announced that I wanted to use only organic fertilizer for our 2019 hot pepper crop, and I'm sticking to it. Jim White from Fishner was nice enough to send us a sample of his organic fertilizer and soil conditioning supplement, which is made from fish manure and is a byproduct of catfish farming. One thing I especially like about Fishner is that unlike other fish fertilizers or manure products, it doesn't have an unpleasant odor. And most importantly, it promises increased yields and long lasting benefits to soil. Others seem to be getting impressive results, so we're looking forward to growing some test seedlings in the near future. We'll add Fishner to an organic potting mix and compare the results to the potting mix we used last year that contains chemical fertilizer. And of course, we'll show you the results. Yes, I realize it's been weeks, but we still have these harvested plants hanging in the garage. As you can see, there has been a lot of additional ripening. While they're a stage or two past plump, juicy, and crunchy, they'll still be great for sauce. I'll need to do a final harvest on these in the next few days. Otherwise, they'll freeze on the vine in this uninsulated, unheated building. Our favorite hot sauce recipe is a Belizean style made with carrots and fresh peppers. So we decided it was time we became cultured and tried some fermented sauce. For our first trial, we're making three small batches. One with assorted chocolate seven pots, one with Carolina Reapers, and one with a combination of seven pot white, seven pot pink, and seven pot chiguanas yellow. Right now, they're in our basement cold closet doing their thing. We'll let them ferment down there for at least a couple of months. Then we'll blend them up and bottle them and show you the whole process in a new video.
promised, that was a little preview of a new song I'm working on. It's called The Jar. I'm on kind of an 80s synth pop wavelength right now, and that's good because the style of this song is tubularly attuned to the theme of the upcoming video in which it will be featured. It's an ode to a very special jar. At this point, the song is in a very early stage. I came up with the groove and laid down a few parts to sketch it out. I've also written some lyrics and a melody. In coming days, I'll craft an arrangement and record the vocals and other instruments. I'm pretty sure you'll like this song and the video it's part of. It's about hot peppers, but it's a little different than anything we've done so far. Coming soon. Hope you enjoyed being updated on our indoor projects. Sorry to bail on the overwintering. If you'd like to stay in the loop, please subscribe to our channel and tap the bell to receive a notification when we post a new episode. For even more Seven Pot Club, follow our daily updates on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. For Seven Pot Club, I'm Rob.